this is Jessica with NC Serves Radio, our first premier broadcast. Um, I want to introduce to you guys today, uh, we have Mr. Kevin Rumley with Veteran Buncombe County Veterans Treatment Court with us. What's up, Kevin? Hey, how's it going, Jessica, Ricky? We also have Mr. Ricky Johnson, NC Serves Western Peer Support, who's going to help us here too. How you, how's everybody doing? So starting out, um, we just want to introduce Kevin and let him give us a little tidbit about him and we'll start with that and then we'll really dive into what Veterans Treatment Court is and how that started. Let me, let me make a point real quick, Kevin. I want to introduce you guys to uh, my coworker, Jessica. Um, Brandon Wilson is what keeps the wheels turning at NC Serves Western, but Jessica Rice is the one that's the glue, to, the glue that keeps it held together. Uh, Jessica's a Marine wife. She's a mother of two. Um, she's been a huge influence in my life. Um, she's, uh, she's impacted me tremendously. I just want to thank Jessica for all you've done for me. Um, the, Jessica's a great friend, a great leader, but she's more than that, she's a great person. Uh, get, getting to know Jessica has been therapeutic for me as far as her just letting me be uh, around our kids uh, with the loss of my son. So I just want to thank you, Jessica, publicly. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you, Ricky. Kevin, thank go you ahead. for that awesome introduction. <laughs> Well, well I definitely want to echo that. Jess is amazing. She plays a integral part of our Veterans Court team, as do you, Ricky. So it's really an honor to be here today with the both of you. Um, so my name's Kevin Rumley, and I'm the coordinator of Veterans Treatment Court. And um, this inaugural session of, uh, what are you going to call this program? NC Serves Radio. Ooh, I like it. Mm -hmm. What's the tagline? Serving those who have served. Serving those who have served. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, thanks for having me on to just talk about the Veterans Treatment Court and a little bit about my own journey of recovery. Uh, just for anyone who's not familiar with the Veterans Court, it is a program here in Buncombe County for veterans. It's similar to drug court. It's a diversion program for veterans that are facing nonviolent felony charges. So instead of going to prison, you can plead into our court and focus on treatment and rehabilitation. Awesome, awesome. So what's a little bit of the background of Veterans Treatment Court? Where did it start or kind of how did it get started? It started in New York. Uh, there was a judge there who uh, realized whenever he would ask a defendant about their military experience, they would kind of straighten their back and there was a definite sense of pride that would come over them. Uh, so he wanted to capitalize on this, and lo and behold, created what is now known as the Veterans Court. Um, and I think it trickled its way down to Buncombe County in around uh, 2012. Uh, Judge Pope took an interest in it, and he was working with the clerk of court, Steve Cogburn, and he said, hey, I want to get this at Buncombe County. How do we do it? Uh, it took a lot of people. A lot of parties came to the table, including... Uh, the Asheville VA, the district attorney, and public defender's office. But in 2015, we had our inaugural session, and we've been going strong since then. Awesome, awesome. So how many courts are there, uh, veteran treatment courts, in North Carolina? So right now, there are four, and the Buncombe County Veterans Court is the only superior-level court. Nice. So the other ones uh, focus on misdemeanors. Ours is a little longer in length, so we're 18 months or longer. Um, but uh, I should highlight that funding for veterans courts is always been difficult. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, we aren't funded through the state, and I know the other um, VTCs in North Carolina are struggling too, so we're always looking for grant funding. But, um, yeah, just – just getting the word out and supporting it and hopefully even, you know, our legislators hear the good work that we're doing and decide to support us. And I'd, I'd like to touch on that as far as, uh, you know, the, the, to let the, let the community know. I myself am also a two-time convicted felon. I've uh, been in the courtroom many times, uh, shackled in front of the judge. Um, I've, this, this courtroom experience for me, it's amazing to see the impact that it has on veterans, the positivity, uh, seeing Judge Pope. Uh, tell these veterans that uh, he appreciates their service. He's uh, proud of them. Is there anything he can do for them? So, uh, Judge Pope, if you're listening, we appreciate what you do as well. Yeah, definitely. He's he spearheaded the whole uh, concept here in Buncombe County and has really transformed a lot of veterans' lives. And 
Um, I mean, we get to see it every VTC session. Right? He really cares for the veterans. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, let's take it back to uh, your experience, Kevin. So just part of your transition from military life to civilian life, can you tell us a little bit about that and kind of how that formed your journey? Yeah, I was uh, in the Marine Corps when I was 18 years old, and uh, I remember going to the recruiter saying, I want to be a rifleman. I want to join the Marines like my dad, and I want to carry the rifle. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't long after that I was sent to Iraq, and then when I was in country, um, I ended up being injured by an improvised explosive device, and um, it killed my best friend Chris Wasser. And the remainder of the remainder of the shrapnel went through my legs, my arm, and uh, my left eye. Uh, so my recovery journey and transition back to civilian life was um, it definitely wasn't unique. We have a lot of veterans that have been injured or carry the psychological wounds of war, uh, but I found that I was given um, a heavy amount of drugs and opioids, mm -hmm. um, and my brain latched onto that, not just for the physical pain, but the emotional pain and the trauma. And just with the history of addiction in my family, it was uh, about an eight-year struggle I had uh, just trying to get out of the core, leave my tribe, that was and find stable footing in the community but it wasn't until really I uh, found a new tribe here in Asheville and support systems that really took me under their wing they took me to the VA hospital um, it took several uh, chances it was probably my fifth attempt at getting clean and really sticking with it mm -hmm. um, that I was able to you know, change the people, places, and things in my life uh, to more support and uh, that unconditional love. But yeah, after about eight years of suffering, um, I got clean with the help of family, friends, and the VA here, and slowly just started uh, putting my life back together, which is a uh, all-too-common story. We see it a lot. I know Ricky and I have talked about this at length. Uh, the recovery journey for everyone is unique. But uh, we want, and same with NC Serves, we want to, regardless of where you are in your recovery journey, we want to be able to support you. Absolutely. And, Kevin, I want to touch on also, you, you spoke on your, um, your, your many chances at uh, gaining some sobriety and recovery and, uh, and being successful. That's one of the beautiful things about uh, Veterans Treatment Court is for many of these veterans, uh, this might be their last opportunity to get it together. And um, that's where you step in and uh, – I've watched you benefit a lot of people, so I commend you for that. Yeah, that that's the the amazing thing is um, the traditional justice system isn't about second chances or third chances or fourth and fifth. But the Veterans Court, um, we follow what are called graduated sanctions. So even if you're in early recovery, we're not going to put you in jail for your first use or your second use. We're going to see if we can... Um, support you with more treatment, what isn't working. Um, and so it's kind of that uh, multiple chances, and if it's not working for our veteran, what can we do as a team and as the mentors to support our veteran? Because, um, yeah, they're not going this journey alone. Absolutely. Right, right. I just want to throw out there, if any veterans out there or any family members of veterans know of anybody that – needs assistance with this or is struggling with this type of situation, um, NC Serves Western is definitely there to help. We can be reached at 855-962-8387, 855-962-8387. Um, and we can definitely, we can try to get you enrolled in the courts if you're eligible and help you with those things. We can help with paperwork. Um, but we really can, we can help with just about anything. Uh, give us a call. We'd be happy to look into resources for you. Um, one thing I want to kind of circle back to is you really talked about that tribe, and I know you and Ricky have kind of, I mean, we're a tribe here, and treatment court's a tribe. I definitely feel that. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about the mentor program and kind of how that helps you help your participants? Yeah, definitely, and I, I'll hand that off to Ricky because uh, he's such a integral part of our mentor court, and really I think the mentor program is why the VTC is successful. Definitely. Sure. Um, <clears throat> being a mentor in VTC is one of my um, most gratifying roles that I have in my career now. Um, 
I'm sure most of you heard my story. Um, I am a uh, two, I have two felony convictions, one for methamphetamine and DWIs, uh, prison, homelessness, uh, a long bout with substance use. Uh, being a mentor is, uh, you know, basically just being able to get on the level where a veteran may be at, uh, to be able to encourage them, to listen to them, have compassion, but also speak of accountability. Um, something I enjoy. Um, it's a lot of responsibility, but uh, I'm, I always look forward to the challenge. So. Yeah, and that's that is the um, the the relationship that you build with your veteran is probably the most important part of their recovery process. So we know in addiction we tend to isolate. We know when we're using we, um, you know, the relationships we had before they disintegrate. Um, and for myself, and I hear this a lot from other veterans. They didn't know how to live without the substance or the alcohol. And so here is this new person that's emerging from the veteran. They're clean. They're getting treatment. But something as basic as being a human with another human and learning how to kind of coexist, talk, just have a normal conversation uh, without, you know, having substances in your mind and trying to get something out of another individual. It's just a, it's a paradigm shift. It's totally new. But it's so important and it's often overlooked in recovery. Um, so, yeah, the relationship that you're building, they trust you. We call the mentor the battle buddy. Sure. And um, it's they're the first person the veteran reaches out to. If they're uh, thinking of using, if they're kind of struggling, you know, they can call them, pick them up, uh, pick up the phone in the middle of the night just to talk to them. It's, it's an amazing dynamic that the mentor has with the veteran participant. What do you um, what do you look for in those mentors, or what kind of if someone's interested in being a mentor, where can we kind of direct them? Yeah, so if any veterans are out there listening, they can go to www.bunkumveteranscourt.com and just click the mentor link. Um, and it has a few questions that you can answer. Um, most important, you have to be a veteran. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're looking for veterans that are passionate about service um, and supporting justice-involved veterans on their recovery journey. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to commit to the weekly contact, um, both by phone, face-to-face. -face. Uh, it's, it's a big responsibility. On paper, you know, I could say, oh, you have to agree to eight hours a month and come into court um, at least once a month. So we meet for court every two weeks. Mm -hmm. But, um, and Ricky, you can attest to this, it's so much more than, you know, just these simple things on paper. Absolutely. Um, you know, I've, like I said before, I've been in, I've been in multiple courtrooms and um, the, the, the beauty of a veterans treatment court is just the support, not only from the team, but the veterans, you know, the, the one thing veterans understand is brotherhood and camaraderie and, uh, you know, supporting one another. So even when you see a brother fall, um, that mentality of we don't leave anybody behind, you know, they still, they're still there to lift one another up. So um, even even when it's uh, you know uh, disappointing to see someone maybe relapse, it's still you find beauty in seeing you seeing you know the guys lift one another up. So uh, that's unlike any courtroom I've ever been in personally. So yeah, and every veteran will stand in front of the judge, and unlike any courtroom I've been in too, <laughs> the judge asks them how many days they have sober, and they may say I have three days, Your Honor, and the entire courtroom starts clapping. And yep. It really is a supportive environment. But um, for our mentors, uh, we ask that their service, so any of the branches, we're excited to have them. The ability to come to court, we meet every other Friday at 1030. Uh, we do know a lot of, obviously, our veterans are working, and they can't uh, make the court date. So um, we can kind of work with them around their schedule making sure that they're kind of meeting with the veteran, everything's running smooth. Um, we do ask, uh, they have to be comfortable with us doing a background investigation, and then there's um, probably we'll ask you to come in and speak to the team just so we can ask questions. You know, we're protective of our veterans. Mm -hmm. We care for them. So right, uh, if you're passionate, we would love to have you reach out to us. And, okay. and also, Kevin, I want to touch on um, – you know, don't get it twisted. This is still the, the legal system. It's still the justice system. And, you know, Judge Pope is a, 
he's about compassion, but he's also about accountability. This program is intense um, as far as, you know, you don't, you can't do whatever you want. There's still programs and rules and, you know, criteria that you must uh, abide by. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I tell all of the veterans as I'm talking to them, doing jail outreach or if they're thinking about coming into the program, I remind them that it's easier to just serve your time. Absolutely. Good point. That, um, yeah, change is really difficult. Yep. And we're going to be stacking on the treatment. They'll have accountability um, and oversight through probation, so they have to come see myself and probation twice a week. They're doing the twice-weekly year analysis. Uh, they're going to be on an electronic monitor for the first 90 days. Uh, just a lot of that you know, sense of freedom is really removed for yeah. sure. Jessica, what's your role at Veterans Court? So for Veteran Treatment Court, I'm a, compu- a community partner. So I uh, sit at the table as NC Serves Western and help direct those, uh, those in need of services to other community partners. Um, I kind of am a catch-all, and I like to listen in to those different scenarios and try to help them find a good fit. Um, out in the community. So when NC Serms Western is sitting at the table, it really actually brings all of our 85 providers to the table. Um, so that's important. And she does an amazing job, I might add. <laughs> she you. does. And it's I've yet to present a um, veteran's concern that NC Serves hasn't found a solution. Um, so I'm, I'm challenging any veterans out there Definitely. to reach out to NC Serves with anything that uh, you may be confronting, and they will find a way to support you. Yeah, definitely. We're looking. We're always looking for those resources, and we're looking for those tough cases. If if you have something that you think you know nobody will be able to ever be able to help me with, uh, we want to look into it for you. Definitely, uh, we don't guarantee, but you know we want to we want to help you and help you navigate those services. Definitely. Um, let's talk about. So we talked a little bit about the participants and kind of how they segue into this and kind of what kind of recovery looks like. But what what are we looking for in participants, or how do we find those? So our participants, we ask that or require that they have at least one day of active duty service. Mm -hmm. So that's outside of their training, um, boot camp, or if you're in reserves, you have to at least be activated for one day. Or have um, you're eligible for VA health services. So those are kind of the big requirements. Um, For a veteran to make it in the program, he has to reside in Buncombe County. Mm -hmm. For uh, the duration of the program, it has to be stable housing. Uh, But we consider uh, the VRQ, we work closely with them Mm -hmm. and ABCCM. Um, They have to, um, I think the big one is the motivation. They have to have that motivation to change, Definitely. to put in the work. Um, you know, we are working with the district attorney, having continued discussions, because um, we don't take violent charges, right. violent felony charges. But um, we do understand that with unaddressed suffering and addiction and PTSD, that sometimes... Um, yeah, it can be a dangerous concoction. Right. Potential. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we we won't take domestic violence, but we are looking at every case on a case-by-case basis. Um, and if we can get kind of the support from all the parties involved, mm-hmm. then we are um, able to take someone that may have more of a violent charge. Okay. Um, but it's going to be a more difficult program for them, too. It's just going to be more oversight. Uh, more accountability. But yeah, the big ones are one day of active duty service, reside in Buncombe County, and kind of like recovery, there's no wrong way to get into the VTC. Perfect. So you can uh, call me. Um, I even give out my cell at 703-389-9918. You can reach out to the public defender's office, the district attorney's office, reach out to NC Serves. NC Serves is, um, you know, just a straight shot to the veterans court. And we do everything together. So, um, yeah, no wrong way to enter the program. All right. Definitely. And, and to, all, to, all, to all you guys watching on a live video, the live feed, um, Kevin and I were asked a question the other day of, uh, Ricky, what was your first impression of Kevin? And uh, as, as you've already heard, Kevin's uh, he was wounded, wounded in Iraq, and he's a combat veteran. So I got this initial uh, image in my head of this very intense individual. And then uh, when I meet Kevin, as you can see, Kevin's a very laid-back guy, um, has great energy. Um, Kevin's a perfect fit for Veterans Court. He's not reactive. He doesn't get emotional. 
And I think that that's a great benefit to the veterans that are already, you know, very reactive and they have a lot of emotion going on. So Kevin's able to balance those guys out very well. I appreciate that. And we kind of balance each other. You know, I've got really long hair. <laughs> and you're missing some on the <laughs> Ke Kevin what would you say the best compliment you were given you're a pushover but uh... oh yeah I'm a pushover or no he's not a pushover but he won't push you over there you go <laughs> yeah that that really meant a lot cuz we do we want to support you um let's take a look well I I want to take this moment to share something very important yeah definitely um it actually isn't important at all, and <laughs> not related to the VTC, but um, for our inaugural NC Serves radio, for those that can't see, can only hear, I'll have to describe it, but my proudest scar from being uh, injured in combat, right, so I have these knee replacements and femur and, uh, you know, fasciotomies. I was, I was banged up pretty good, but this one piece of shrapnel went through my right hand and um, blew all the skin off and then kind of went out the pinky. So, um, yeah, the doctor did some amazing work. They do what are called skin grafts, and he did a skin graft on my uh, right thumb area because all the skin was missing. Uh, and about two months later, I noticed in this one spot that these hairs started to sprout. Now, I don't have uh, hair anywhere else on my hand, but except where this, you know, skin graft was. And... Um, I still have them today, so here we are 10 years later. These amazing, it's a little patch, a garden of hair, if you will. <laughs> um, and I asked the doctor where he got this previous skin from, and uh, he got it from my behind. So I am very proud That's and awesome. honored. Yeah, <laughs> Ricky is now, uh, thank you, thank you, touching the, the butt hair on the hand. Nice. For the inaugural NC Serves, I'm Glad that I could present that. Yeah. So whenever you're shaking hands with Kevin, just yeah. everybody remember that, you know, yep. a little piece of butt there. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, the recovery process and kind of talk about some of the things that civilians might not know or what are some things, some misconceptions about recovery that would kind of help them guide people to Veterans Treatment Court? Well, um, a common misperception about recovery is that it is a destination. So... Um, yeah, oh, you're, you're in recovery now, you're good. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's not a destination, but a continual daily process of reaffirming um, an individual's uh, desire to be clean and in recovery. They have to manage it every day, same as you would manage uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's something that takes a lot of work. Um, and that is a change in an individual's mindset that we see happen over time as a veterans in the court program uh, doesn't happen overnight it's not a destination uh, you know when we have a veteran who's new to the program and they're at 30 days clean and sober and they start talking about uh, how they they're done they did it there you know and it's this kind of very robust confidence um, that's when our flags start going up because sure. <laughs> we know that it is, it's, it's every day and it gets easier and that kind of fear and everything does subside. But I think just for people to know that recovery isn't a destination. Sure. And as, I'm going to touch on what Kevin spoke about, you know, the, just the recovery process and, and guys to all of you listening that um, we can all relate, we can all relate to a transition of some kind. It could be uh, going from homelessness to having stability from prison to society it's very difficult, um, you know, making those transitions without any kind of support, and that's what a huge, uh, a huge benefit of a veterans treatment court is. You know, we, when we initially get into those transitions, a lot of times fear and doubt, you know, the fear of the unknown and doubt in our abilities starts to take over. But the, you know, it's always important to have that support that people, those like-minded individuals that we, uh, that's what we're about at veterans treatment court. So, I just want to throw like with the recovery piece that the participants that you. Uh, like your new enrolls, they don't necessarily have to be in a treatment program or already doing the 12-step or already clean, the kind of all walks of life. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. The uh, veteran doesn't even have to be in recovery yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of our veterans are still in active use, but they really want that change. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important. And they may not know how to change. So, um, again, we just surround them with the support. We surround them with 
um, the resources that NC Serves identifies in the community with the local VA um, hospital, who's one of the best in the nation, um, and then our local community mental health providers. Perfect. So, touching on the, the community health providers, so what roles do you see the courts playing in promoting stronger communities of recovery? So the, um, the whole approach of Veterans Court is, in a way, it promotes um, harm reduction, mm -hmm. right? Right. So I think understanding recovery isn't a destination but a journey and that um, recovery is also a continuum of wellness. Uh, so I think our, car, our court promotes this um, understanding about recovery. We're not this black and white, you're either in recovery or you're not. Um, we we kind of see the shades of gray. We see that it's all about promoting an individual's uh, health and wellness mm -hmm. and however that's achieved because uh, we work with medication-assisted therapy. That's really big, so Suboxone and Methadone. Um, and the, the most important part about that is not just the medication, but the accompanying psychotherapy. Right. Um, so they're in treatment, they're doing the work. Um, and I, I think just advancing kind of that mindset of harm reduction, many pathways to recovery, and it, it takes a community uh, to really heal, that's, that's probably how we advance it the most. Right. Kevin, I, I'm, I would like to ask you, um, what do you think the sustainability uh, that the veterans have been provided through Veterans Treatment Court, how do you think that compares to other specialty courts that uh, the, state's, the state may use? Other specialty courts? I think, um, you know, they all follow similar national models, mm -hmm. um, and there's best practices for all of the problem-solving courts or diversion courts. Um, but I think we're lucky as veterans because as they go through their journey, they're being connected to different veteran uh, communities and resources, including the VA hospital, including uh, through NC Serves. Uh, just there's an incredible amount of resources for veterans in Asheville. Sure. And I don't know that I could say that for all the other diversion courts, right? I don't know if there's um, as many resources just for an individual um, who gets out of drug court. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, we're really fortunate to have so many people in Western Carolina that support the veteran community. And we appreciate everybody that does support the veteran community. Uh, we also appreciate any veteran that served, past or present, and uh, we appreciate your family members as well. Let's talk about a little bit about what um, individuals can do to help the Veterans Treatment Court. I know we talked about funding, but then we talked about mentors. Is there any other kind of ends that individuals could help these veterans with? Well, I think, um, you know, the the support – of NC Serves and ABCCM and our all of our partners through the court is a really strong way of supporting us. Right, um, You know, we rely so heavily on NC Serves that um, the limitless resources <laughs> it feels like right, right? It's it's incredible, and you are always finding solutions for our veterans. So really, um, you know, our mentor court supporting that. Um, is a big way of doing it, uh, just telling a friend about the VTC, but then supporting NC Serves and ABCCM. That really goes a long way. Definitely, definitely. So with um, NC Serves and ABCCM, we're always looking for volunteers. If anyone wants to volunteer at that Veterans Restoration Court or the Steadfast House, um, that's something we can always get you in touch with. And if there's any community partners out there that aren't already engaging with NC Serves, but they do help veterans or family members, um, we want to we want to talk to you, so definitely feel free to give us a call, um, and we can be reached at 855-962-8387, 855-962-8387, um, but we want to have those conversations with you about what you can do to help our veterans and help grow this community, because like I said, we're always looking for new resources. So Jessica, what what is uh, a provider to NC Serves? How would you define that? Right. If I'm passionate about something does that make me a provider right so we want providers to be 
community partners that offer services to veterans. So veterans or their family members um, or their caregivers. Um, no cost services that you offer. Um, we have people that offer housing, people that offer mental health. It's all the, all the uh, human service needs, um, education, any, any sort of human service need that you would offer to a veteran. Uh, we want to talk to you and find out what you're doing in the community and we really want to showcase that and be able to have that available to our veterans. Kevin, can you touch on how the Veterans Treatment Court was started? Was it was it start in Buffalo, New York? Is that how it yeah, it started in Buffalo, New York under uh, Judge Russell. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really just caught fire. Um, but, yeah, like I was saying earlier, he early on recognized, you know, this, this is a unique um, population, a unique community with uh, different lived experiences, um, you know, only 1% of our American population has served, mm -hmm. and um, an even less percent has gone to combat. And what are we doing as a nation uh, right now to support these veterans, these men and women, as they fight for their country and return home? And I think, um, you know, he was seeing a lot of Vietnam veterans in his court in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and he was also seeing the young OIF, OEF veterans come into his court. And so it was this, he talks about, you know, as a nation, how we welcomed home the Vietnam veterans um, is it, it wasn't acceptable, right? And uh, the repercussions of that are seen decades later. And it's seen, especially in our justice system. So if you're entering the justice system, like you said earlier, Ricky, it's kind of the last chance, the end of the line. Um, but there are all these points and opportunities along the way that, um, you know, a veteran could have been diverted through a different program to get some help, whatever it may be. So, yeah, the court is just an opportunity to really uh, interface with this veteran and stop that cycle that is addiction that is mental illness that um, you know is any number of things that they're suffering with yeah so he he um, said you know what I don't want our OIF OEF veterans um, in two decades to face what our Vietnam veterans are experiencing now so he wanted to break that cycle so I'm um, Kevin with the with the team at uh, Veterans Treatment Court it's it's a voluntary base right that we have yeah and do you find it unique that we have a prosecuting attorney that's on our that's uh, not He's there not to punish, but to uh, help support the veterans. Oh, it's strange, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my experience, uh, the the prosecutors, he has that punitive lens, right? But in the Veterans Treatment Court, he's standing up and uh, really celebrating with everyone else in the courtroom the success of the veteran. So, Ricky, let's just kind of touch on you. This wasn't an opportunity that was offered to you. What do you kind of think? How does that affect you, or what do you think you could have done differently, or if this could have helped you? Oh, it absolutely you know? could have. Um, you know, for myself, I don't really think about what ifs and all that, but I can see how it's, it could have been a great. It could have been of a great benefit to me, uh, just having that support of, um, you know, fellow veterans that can relate to uh, the transition process, but also relate to uh, substance use. I can see that. I can see the benefit in it. It's just, um, it's an amazing program all around. Like I said, to see. Um, I've never been in a courtroom to see the judge be so supportive, and um, you know, the, you know, the, you have to understand when you go in front of a judge, this your, or you know, your 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 freedom or your life can be in his hands, and to see um, somebody go up there and see the judge just congratulate him, thank him, um, it's a, I, I, it's 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 a beautiful experience. Every time I go to, you know, I'm sitting, I went from standing in front of the judge shackled now to sitting where the the jury sits at, you know, and you know, I have, well, I have friends now that are law enforcement, so. Um, I enjoy every time I go. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, let's talk about the actual court. Um, so who can come to court, who kind of shows to the table, those kind of things. So the uh, court is open to the public, okay. um, and it is something that you have to see in person. So we would invite anyone um, to come to the courthouse. We meet on the ninth floor of the Buncombe County Courthouse, which is 60 Court Plaza. Asheville, North Carolina, 28801. Um, just take the elevator up to 9. Right when you get off the elevator, boom, that's the courtroom. That is ours. And 
Uh, we try and uh, we decorate it with the uh, flags of each branch. We try and kind of create this, um, I don't know, this energy, you know, in the room that there's a sense of pride. Um, so we start at 1030 every other Friday, and our next Veterans Court is on the 15th. So next Friday, 1030, ninth floor of the Buncombe Courthouse, and uh, the judge will come in, and he always starts off with the Pledge of Allegiance, and that's unique in a courtroom. I haven't had that happen before. Um, and although Judge Pope is not a veteran, he he's a, um, I don't know, I, I think of him as a Marine brother. <laughs> you know, he's an honorary veteran to me because there's no bigger advocate in the community for our veterans. Judge Pope um, is also on the board of the Blue Ridge Honor Flight. Right. And that is a... Um, day-long journey for world started as uh, World War II veterans but it's become um, Korea and Vietnam and they do this twice a year it's a trip to Washington DC where they take the veterans uh, to all of the major uh, memorial sites and at that site they'll do um, kind of a ceremony and an award for each veteran they'll give them a challenge coin um, but I think more emotional too is on these honor flights um, all the people that stand and clap and really just acknowledge this parade of World War II veterans or Korea and Vietnam. Um, but yeah, so Judge Pope just does that um, you in his your, free time. And you let your participants, they attend that and right, yeah. with that, right? So that was something Judge Pope um, recently kind of brought forward was that for any of our Veterans Court graduates, they get to go on this flight um, and... It's totally free. Otherwise, if you go on and serve as a guardian, um, it's your paying for the veteran's flight, basically. Right. But um, it's kind of a reward. And while I'm thinking of it, the carrot of the veterans' court that's is. What I was, that's what I was about to ask. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about the intensity of the program and um, all the work that goes into it. Kevin, could you share with share with us the uh, fruits of the labor of the? Yes. Yes. The uh, the fruits of the labor are. A year after completing the Veterans Court, if you're still um, compliant, haven't broken any laws, then you're eligible for a dismissal. So you can petition the court to have your charge dismissed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, new statutes in North Carolina allow for that dismissal to be expunged. So uh, the easiest way to say is a year after you graduate, you can get your charge expunged mm -hmm. unless it's a DWI or DUI. Um, and those are statutes also that you can't have those um, expunged or dismissed. Um, Kevin, how many graduates have you had through the Veterans Treatment Court? And also, um, could you, uh, man, the, the the graduation that you had, we had last, was beautiful. Could you kind of explain that uh, whole process? Yeah, the um, I think to date we've had eight graduates. And of the graduates, we have 0% recidivism. Um, and... For a veteran who is graduating, that means they've gone through the two-year process. They've made it through the five phases. As they would say, they, they jumped through all the hoops, right? A lot of hoops to jump through, a lot of requirements. But um, we really want to celebrate and honor their effort. Um, so we host a graduation, which is also open to the public. Um, and hopefully our next graduation, I can come on NC Serves Radio and uh, promote it or you give that can. to you, Jessica. Yes, you can. Awesome. But yeah, it's a, it's a celebration. Uh, we go to the fifth floor of the courthouse, the big ceremonial room with, you know, huge ceilings and these massive paintings on the wall. And it just feels, uh, really Royal. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> does. Yeah. And, uh, we bring in, uh, through the help of NC serves, we brought in the color guard. Mm -hmm. So the honor guard does, um, this amazing presenting of the colors. Then um, we have music. We have the pomp and circumstance. Um, and my, what's one, one of our veteran participants? He sings the national anthem very well. Might I add? Oh right, yes, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dion, amazing vocalist. And um, I think one of my favorite parts about the graduation is the quilts of valor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So every veteran is awarded a quilt and it's um 
made through the Quilts of Valor Association. They come out, these amazing uh, ladies, they've done it now, I think, for all eight of our graduates. They come out, and they hold a ceremony within the ceremony, and they read the speech, and then they ask the veteran to come up, and they surround him on both sides and wrap him in this massive quilt. It's quite a visual to see, and it is that image of redemption and um, hope that I just love. Uh, yeah, so the the graduation ceremony. Uh, Kevin, could you touch on what the benefit? The, can you touch on a little bit about the canine therapy that um, uh, Veterans Treatment Court also provides? Yeah, so we are partnering with uh, a really cool program out of Baltimore called the Warrior Canine Connection, and they have. I think they're in seven or eight other veterans treatment courts across the U.S. Yeah, and they're doing uh, animal, it's supportive therapy, right? So it's actually our veterans in the program are training these puppies to become a service animal, which takes about two years of the duration of uh, a veterans treatment court participant's time. They train the dog to be a service animal. And then they give away that dog to a combat wounded veteran. Um, and right now we we're starting small, so we have one dog. His name is Clifford, and <laughs> he's the small red dog. <laughs> well, he's adorable though, and it there's something really amazing that happens with our veterans and the service animal. So they're training them, um, and it does count towards their community service requirement, which every veteran in the court has to do. Uh, 50 hours, yeah. so they're training this dog to give away to another veteran. But um, I think unbeknownst to the veteran, they're receiving the therapy themselves, right? Right, definitely. Yeah, and they'll talk about it too, how they feel safe around the dog. You know, they can kind of let their guard down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Jess, if when you're in the courtroom, if you felt um, a change in the energy when Clifford walks in? Definitely, yeah, and you can tell the ones that have worked with him and the ones that haven't quite got there yet, um, but definitely you can see the, the caring that goes into training the dog, and he's getting pretty good. I've seen some of his tricks. He's getting pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he has some tricks. We're They're teaching him how to salute right yeah. now, yeah. which is a very important service. Um, yeah, <laughs> Im important, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, as, as a, um, a veteran, could you maybe tell us as a community how we could uh, better support veterans returning home or just in general? Yeah, well, and I guess I would throw it back to you too. As a, sure. We got two Marines here, Marine wife, so. We're going to take over the whole building. <laughs> yeah, watch out. I, I, I think it's uh, person-based, right? It's individualized. Sure. What I need may not be what you need. Definitely. So I don't want to speak for all veterans, but... Um, it, I was never offended by anyone just asking me that, you know, sure. someone asking me, how can, how can I support you? Right. Cause and people do ask, right. They say, Hey, I know it sounds cliche. Thank you for your service, but, um, is there anything that you need? How can I support you? And I think that's important. I think we don't, don't ever stop asking. Sure. Yeah. No. And what, and what Kevin touched on as far as, you know, guys, if you, if you approach, uh, ten veterans and tell nine of them you appreciate their service. Those nine are going to appreciate it. You, there may be one individual that um, may get offended, but I would rather offend that one person and uh, support those other nine. You know, it's a chance that uh, sometimes you have to take. So, uh, Jessica, could you tell us a little bit of your experience about me being married to a, a veteran, a Marine? I mean, it's a it's a tough one, you know. No, it's good. Um, so he was deployed to Iraq um, for a little time and. We were together during that time, and that's definitely tough. Um, I do feel like the supports from his unit, there were a lot of uh, calling trees. There was a lot that I did to check on other wives, to check on their husbands, things like that. Um, so definitely is a community effort, and, you know, you really get on that personal level with someone that people I'd never talked to before that I was calling every day, um, and I think that's important. One of the things I found that, you know, when they get out or when they're, they're done with their service or they come back home, um, they need those questions and they need those questions asked. They need to be asked, you know, are you okay? How are you doing? What can we do to help you? Um, and that's kind of formed me into what I do at NC Serves Western, that it's really a catch-all for all of those questions that, you know, I need help enrolling in the VA or I need 
uh, help with mental health or I need somewhere to live. Um, and we want to be that catch all and see all of those things when they come back that aren't being met. So then we can create those resources and really reach out to the community and say, this is what our veterans need, who, who's able to provide it, who's able to fund it. Um, so that's something, you know, very personal to me, kind of how I came to this. Um, we have our office staff, you know, we have Ricky, who's a Marine. I'm a Marine spouse. We have Patrick, um, who's that man in the office in the phone. So if, hey, you're, Patrick. Call, if you're calling in, you know, he's there. Um, but he's an Army veteran. So, um, and then Brandon's also a Marine. Um, so I think it's important that that community, we really see, like Kevin was talking about earlier, that tribe, um, that it comes back to that, that we want to reach out to those those that we've talked to before. And you can, and I'll speak for Jessica, um, you, you can you can absolutely see the way the uh, the veteran environment and that tribe mentality has uh, benefited her. She's a great asset to our team. Um, you know, she's, it's like she's a veteran herself just because, you know, she's married to a Marine and she's around it so much. So she automatically knows how to uh, relate to the veterans coming in and getting on their level. So, uh she does an amazing job, and I can't thank her enough. So. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And, yeah, the terminology sometimes gets lost on me, but everything else I, I try to get in touch with. <laughs> Jessica, def Jess uh, Jessica definitely has thick skin working around us all the time, so oh, yeah. she, she's a good sport. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right. Anything else anybody wants to touch on? Kevin, you could you touch, if you don't yeah, mind, um, it's not too personal, could you maybe touch on a little bit of your uh, Iraq experience? Yeah, I, um, you know, it was I was a young kid then, so it does feel like a different lifetime, um, which there, makes it easy to talk about. <laughs> the, and the reason I ask is I want I want the, everybody listening and watching to kind of understand what you know uh, transpired that led you to where you know your, your two years your two years of physical therapy and and all that came with that. Yeah, I I I always look back on that, and I have greater empathy and compassion for the person I was. Um, and what I went through, which um, is what a lot of people in recovery or that are not yet in recovery are soon to go through. Um, but yeah, being, a, being in Iraq as an 18, 19 year old, um, I was serving on the Syrian border. And it's funny because I was not equipped to be this ambassador of the US. I was not, um, you know, I could barely, I don't know, staying in my boots, you know. <laughs> you're, you're all oorah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of that. But um, I I think just growing up in Northern Virginia, my dad was a Marine, my uh, family, just a long history of serving. And, yeah, I was really gung-ho about it all. And then um, the first day that we landed, these improvised explosive devices started going off. And you can't see them, right? They'll put them in a trash can or buried under the ground mm -hmm. and they trigger them with a telephone, a cell phone. So they may be on the other side of town and just know that you're walking through uh, Market Street and they can just trigger it. Um, we ended up losing 26 veterans from the unit and um, Captain Gannon, he was uh, killed in action and uh, we also had a, a Medal of Honor recipient, uh, Corporal Dunham, and that was, I was injured April 7th, and I think his was two weeks later, um, but he he was in a scuffle, and uh, his grenade was pulled, and he was around several other Marines at the time, and he uh, pulled off his helmet and threw it and jumped with his body on top of the grenade. Um, and probably saved everyone around him, uh, which, you know, this is just the type of person that I got to serve with and um, that I was looking up to. And, yeah, so there's kind of different chunks of my experience. There was when I was in country, in war, in combat, and an even bigger part was when I uh, was in the hospital at Walter Reed and uh, a doctor told me, Kevin, you're not going to walk again. Uh, which probably isn't the best thing to tell a Marine. You can't do something. Right. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> uh, right, right. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> oh, wow. I yeah. hadn't thought about this. But, yeah, I, I had 32 surgeries and um, it was bed bound for several months. And it was just a long, grueling process to get all my faculty and my um, my limbs working again, just really basic stuff like walking I had to learn. Um, but, uh, 
Um, I think, yeah, I don't know if it was you, Ricky. Someone asked, you know, if I had ever thought about, um, you know, s stopping during the recovery, you know. And I think it was because I didn't have that as an option. It was never an option on the table. I just had to keep going because um, the only option was to get better than I did. And I think I apply that a lot now to other things, uh, my own recovery, the veteran's journey. If you only s only allow yourself towards this goal, right? I mean, life is going to happen on life's terms. But, um, yeah, that that focus on a singular goal, which could be recovery, the wellness, walking again, whatever it is, um, you know, I, that was, that's what got me here and I walked in the door with you <laughs> and yeah, I think that served me well and hopefully we can kind of give that to our veterans. Well, Kevin, I want to touch, I want to say this real quick. Um, I hate the, I hate that the hell you went through that led you to here, but, uh, I'm thankful that we've got to know you through it. Uh, just like the, just like you, the Marines that you looked up to that served with you. Uh, we look up to you, and uh, we're blessed to know you. And uh, I, you personally keep me sharp. Iron sharpens iron, so uh, we all appreciate you, man. We all look up to you. So thank you, and likewise, appreciate definitely. It. I just want to side by side something with Kevin's story. You know, you've told the story. I've heard your story um, multiple times. I, I like to hear it. Um, but you talked about being uh, in Germany and then flown to Walter Reed. And I just recently had an Air Force um, Special Forces friend of ours that had that same, he, 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 we found out he was in Germany and I immediately knew what that meant, just knowing your story. So it really oh, wow. opened my eyes to, you know, kind of the terminology of just that being in Germany and then flying to Walter Reed, that he's got a recovery in front of him. And it's a really cool side by side that that's kind of how things are done. And so this is a friend that was recently injured? Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, he's in Afghanistan, or he was in Afghanistan. He's at Walter Reed on maybe his second or third week now, uh, recovering, so. Do you know what the injuries were? Uh, yeah, he was in uh, in the top of a vehicle and a sniper shot. Uh, wow. Yeah, into his face. So. Oh, my goodness. He's got some recovery. He's got um, his jaws shut right now, and they're working with him. But he looks good. He's in good spirits. And wow. I'm going to help him out, too. So, yeah. That's incredible. And I was really impressed with Walter Reed. Good. It was um, – this is back in 2004, but even then it was just cutting edge uh, rehabilitation, and I'd be walking around and I would see veterans that had their uh, arm blown off, but it would be stitched into their stomach, mm -hmm. um, and I saw veterans that had half of their head blown off, and these injuries that you know previous wars would have surely meant death. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now means, yeah, there's a recovery ahead of you, but there is um, 100% the ability to move forward and thrive and live um, a great life. Yeah, there's hope, definitely. Yeah, Kevin, the other, I was bragging to my wife the other day because uh, when I got into your vehicle, I was amazed at how clean it was. And I asked, Ke I asked Kevin, I said, Kevin, did you, just, did, uh, did you just get your truck detailed today? And he said, no, I cleaned it every day. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was really true. Hey, that's true. Hey, I got a question, Kevin. What's your favorite food? Oh, probably uh, Taco Temple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got to give it up for the temple on Charlotte Street. If you yeah. can hear that Taco Temple, we love your tacos. <laughs> That's right, Taco Temple. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, I just love to eat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, what about you? I'm a pizza person. Yeah, mm. I like all kinds of pizza. I like weird things on my pizza. I like potatoes on my pizza. <laughs> I like broccoli, Brussels sprouts on my pizza. Ooh, what about anchovies? Uh, I can't quite do the anchovies. Okay, not yeah. that weird. No. Uh, we, Pineapple, definitely not. And, and <laughs> what? And guys, we missed the most important, intriguing thing uh, about Kevin is he is a drummer in a band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, you, can, you can check out some music on the interwebs. Yep. Um, you can go to www.tylerramsey.com. And, and guys, Kevin actually met Dave Grohl. Um, if you know who he is, he met him like a month ago, so that was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, he kind of looks like uh, my uncle or something. Yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> long hair, big beard, but no big deal. Just hanging out with the drummer for Nirvana, yeah. founder of Foo Fighters. Well, I've been waiting for uh, for your you to bust some stuff out at Veterans Treatment Court graduation. 
Ooh, uh, all think, right. I think we need some drummer action there. That's yeah, well, it's it's a celebration. We just need a, a rock stage. Yeah. Maybe we should talk to Judge Pope about Thanks. building that. <laughs> he might be into it. You know? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Kevin, also, I'm sure the people are curious that are watching. Um, what kind of shampoo and conditioner do you use for your, your beard there? <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't. You don't? <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, interesting. That's He's in part of that no poo crowd. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Dove. No, it's Dove. Okay. Right, Kevin, another I mean, something else we should have, we should have talked about. Um, um, can you explain how the as far as Asheville, Asheville is known to uh, take great care of our be- of our veterans. Um, what what's your uh, what's your perspective of that as far as the support within that within the community of Asheville? Oh yeah, I think it's unparalleled. The um, Community, Buncombe, and Asheville, we have the highest rate of homeless veterans in the entire state. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also have the probably the most resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember a long time ago, someone said that for every nonprofit in Asheville, there are 600 people. Um, so it's difficult if you're a, non-profit, a non-for-profit because um, there's only 600 people in the community that can support you and sustain you. Mm-hmm. But if you are needing support and resources, uh, then there is an organization out there for you. And uh, huh, how do we? Uh, how would we find those if we don't know where to go? That might that Jessica. might be a good uh, good part to step in with NC Serves Western. So yeah, give us a call eight five five nine six two eight three eight seven eight five five nine six two eight three seven. If you're a veteran or spouse or caregiver looking for resources, definitely give us a call. Um, I want to mention, you know, we've talked about Buncombe County specifically, but I know that this is going to go on on Facebook, so some other regions as well. Um, we service the counties in western North Carolina. There's also other NC service markets um, across North Carolina. So if, if you need, if you're a veteran or anyone needs services, definitely give us a call. We'll try to funnel you the correct correct uh, area. Um, but and Guys, I, I want to touch on something before we shut this down. Um, to all the veterans out there, um, your sacrifice was not in vain. It doesn't matter what you did in the military. Um, you know, we appreciate you. Uh, no matter what you're going through, um, there's better days ahead. You know, uh, just keep getting back up. If, you know, if you're thinking of self-harm or anything like that, pick up the phone, call somebody. Um, you know, if you know my story, uh, my son took his own life, and I'm here to tell you, man, uh, suicide's not worth it. Uh, there's people that care about you, and we, we definitely care about you at NC Serves Western and uh, within our community, so. We thank you. We yeah, appreciate definitely. you. All right. Anything else anybody wants to do? I can wrap us up if we're done. No. Just uh, want to say thanks again to NC Serves, Jessica, and Ricky. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. you, Kevin. It's been an honor sitting beside you. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, thank you for advocating for our veterans court, but also the veterans in general. And, uh, man, we it's been a pleasure. Yeah. I want to thank everyone for listening, and like Ricky said, a big thank you to Kevin, and thank you for Ricky for sitting beside me. And um, if anybody needs anything from NC Serves Western, definitely feel free to give us a call. If you're interested in Veteran Treatment Court, uh, look up the website or give us a call. We can help direct you, and um, we'll log off for the day. Thank you.